Another very common topic um, gravitates around the theme of social expectations. So a lot of doctors um, study medicine first and foremost because um, because of their parents or because somebody in the family expects it. Um, that's number one. The other could be that you created an identity around yourself that is highly compatible with that, right? You've, I mean, I had a lot of people that I studied with that decided to do medicine because they really, really liked Grey's Anatomy and they wanted to be like one of these characters. They wanted to be seen as somebody who is smart, hardworking, doing good for society, has a stable income, has a certain social status. And they were attracted more by these sort of external attributes that people give them because of their decision to become a doctor, right? And um, and then thinking about leaving or doing something else comes with the sentiment that they're also losing the right to these privileged uh, prejudices that people bring towards this doctor identity. Um, yeah, and then also you have people also within medicine, if they hear that that you're considering to leave, um, and we also wrote a lot about that in our uh, book, Beyond the Bedside, but if, if they hear that, they will start to um, try to take away your identity. They will tell you things like, oh, but, you know, it costs so much to society that you got to do these medical studies. You, you know, it's, it's not okay that after all this investment, um, you leave. Um, you owe it to society now that you work as a doctor for as long as you can and as much as you can. And I disagree with that fundamentally because uh, first and foremost, in most of the countries, you still have uh, a, a basic right to do with your time and your life what you deem necessary or what you would like to do. Um, it's not a prison or an identity prison to be a doctor. Um, you should not restrict yourself to the doctor identity. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but quite simply, it's very likely that you will pay enough taxes wherever you are to be able to repay what society has paid in order to make it possible for you to study. Right? Or many of you actually went into debt to uh, fund these studies yourselves, so that's okay, right? Um, but um, the other aspect is, if you go to an all-you-can-eat pizza and they ask you to pay, I don't know, $50 and you can eat as much pizza as you want, you might think that this is a great idea before you go into the pizza place. But what if you discover, oh, well, actually the pizza doesn't taste quite as good as I thought, or I'm not hungry anymore all of a sudden, or you eat the first slice and it's tasty and then the second and the third and maybe not so the fifth. But with every other unit of pizza that you consume, your, your satisfaction goes, becomes lower, right? And at some point you're full. And at some point you can't see pizza anymore. You, I don't know, you'd rather have a dessert or whatever. So in any of these situations where you decide now I don't want it anymore, the worst thing you can do is to say, oh, but I will still shop more pizza into my mouth because I have made a decision in the past to pay $50. This thinking has a name. It's called sunk cost fallacy. And it's what people constantly do. They keep throwing what's called good money after bad money um, because they feel like they need to honor a past investment. Otherwise, that past investment um, you know, didn't make sense. But that's not how it goes. You made that decision to study medicine at a point in your life when you felt this was a good idea and you kept doing it and you got your degree. And now you started to work as a medical doctor and maybe you realize it's not as exciting as I had thought um, or it is, but I'm actually feeling like there is a certain amount of talent that I have that I cannot live out in this profession. And I also cannot live it out in another specialty. So I feel like um, without you know any judgment, but maybe if you have a husky, they might like to um, to, to to run in uh, a lot in in colder areas. Right? You don't want to put that dog um, into a small um, apartment in in a warm city, and you don't let them run. They there is a part of their talent that will suffer from it, and. And maybe if you feel that, then you need to think about what can I do to satisfy my talents that have an urge to be lived out, that I cannot suppress. 
right? Um, or maybe you just realize, actually, it's a great profession. But frankly, the system where I am is so dysfunctional and it really destroys other important parts of my life, which could be anything from my health because my nutrition is bad or I can't do my workouts to um, uh, personal life, friends, family, romance, and so on, um, whatever it might be, right? But it is such a stark conflict with other dimensions of my life that I hold dear that um, I need have to change something. Right? That that can also be, right? And there's also, I think, a certain obligation that, that's maybe taken too far um, of society that if they have a certain profession that is really important for them, that they create working conditions in which these people can thrive, stay healthy themselves, um, because who wants to be treated by a person who can't, you know, live healthy themselves? Um, and, and and make sure that they can retain the workforce that has been trained for, uh, previously, right? Of course, within limits, and nobody wants to, like, expect or assume most of you will not expect uh, uh, completely outrageous things in return. But um, many of the doctors that are complaining about the current working conditions are frankly complaining um, with, uh, with, with a lot of good, good arguments. Um, but that's maybe taking it a little bit too far. My point being, you, only because you made an investment in the past, it shouldn't make you keep doing the same bad investment, so to speak, uh, if you realize it's time to make a change. Right? That this would be very, very poor, biased decision making that you should not be doing. Another aspect is, so if they tell you, well, but you're a doctor, shouldn't you work as a doctor? So what is a doctor really, right? We have um, we have non-clinical careers forever. There's microbiology, there is um, uh, pathology, uh, even radiology, you could say, you know, is unless you're interventionalist, is, is diagnostic is not necessarily close. To, it can be, but not always close to the patient. Um, uh, there are public health professionals that also are not touching patients too much. So does doctor really mean that, that you have to be in direct contact with patients? I don't think anybody would, would ever claim that. Um, and even historically, that that's not, that's not it, right? Um, but then we also have doctors who are teachers at universities and um, who are researchers and creating maybe helping create new drugs or um, identifying epidemiological trends that are kind of relevant for whatever it is um, there is a there's a big need for doctors in uh, public administration in politics in journalism and so on where you could only add the value that you can because of the medical education that you have and in many cases also because of the practical experience that you gained after you finished your studies. So, um, you know, what does it mean if somebody challenges your identity as a doctor just because you stepped away from the bedside effectively? It, for me, is not, is not a logical argument. Um, then um, there's also this aspect of, well, maybe what they really mean is um, but you should have an impact on people's lives. And there is an important distinction to be made, right? And I, I don't want to demean the importance or to devalue the importance of clinical medicine. It is important. But just saying only if you have an immediate effect on somebody, is it is it justified that, that you went through medical school and you know got, got your diploma and everything? No, because... You might even have a much, much, much higher societal impact if you have a much bigger level. Imagine that you are part of a team that develops a new drug against cancer and you are reducing the mortality of that specific cancer by, I don't know, 5%, 10%, whatever it has. That would mean that even if from that moment on when that drug gets certified and hits the market, um, even if then you would go sailing and do nothing else in your life anymore, not touch a single patient, you might actually have a higher impact on, you know, the global burden of disease than when you were working as a doctor clinically without taking any uh, holidays and doing as many over hours as you possibly can and retiring with 70 and so on and so on and so on. There are 
scalable ways of having a societal impact um, in many, many fields of uh, uh, different industries. But as a doctor, you certainly have a right to play in that field as well. So again, I'm not saying clinical medicine is inferior or bad, but I'm trying to challenge that notion that um, a doctor is only a doctor when they touch patients. Um, and frankly, you could also be creating a startup. Um, for all I know, you could even you know, work in venture capital, become an investor, or do whatever. If, if you take the same doctor mindset, the same knowledge that you have, your energy, your willingness to work hard and make sacrifices, and, and you put that together with a societal goal that you subscribe to, that is part of your personal mission, you might you might just be doing exactly the right thing by leaving clinical medicine if if this is closer to where your heart is and where your talents are. Um, side note on talents, you know you you might have learned things that are not necessarily useful in other domains, right? So I don't know, maybe stitching somebody up it's a great skill uh, for the ER, for the trauma unit, for surgery, etc. It's not very useful in, in a boardroom in, in most situations. Um, so there are clearly skills that are not very transferable. But a large amount of the knowledge that you have, that is incredibly useful for a lot of other people um, and, and where you can really add a lot of value. And there is a lot of tacit knowledge, skills, softer skills also that you acquired or that you honed, that, that you hardened throughout your journey to becoming a doctor and working as a doctor that will be uh, highly appreciated elsewhere too right so uh, you know it's it's you're not limited that's what i'm trying to say right you're not limited to one narrow field of work just because people have a certain image of what it means to be a doctor or not um and then also um, and probably that's the most important part. Right? Don't try to live other people's lives. If other people think that it's important to be a doctor as a doctor and to work uh, on the patient side, well, then let them study medicine and let them do it. Right? If other doctors feel like, like they need to restrain you or to make you feel bad for leaving, then let them stay. And I know a lot of people who try to... to hold me back from doing something else. And then later they wrote me asking if I can help them um, to find their way out. And so I, you know, I just wouldn't care so much. You don't owe them anything and it's your life. And as you know, uh, a life can sometimes end much, much faster than we think. The trouble is often that people think they have a lot of time and that they can delay their gratification that they uh, can live another dream at some point in the future. And sometimes that future never comes, right? And I think you as a doctor know that best. So don't hold off and be brave. 